The next problem type is the Pythagorean theorem. Anytime you think you might, on any level, have some sort of value that you can turn into a triangle, just do so. If you are looking for a, a side, if you are looking for the area of the triangle or how much carpet you can put it on or whatever, don't use the Pythagorean theorem. But if you are trying to find the side of something or the length of something, it is almost always a Pythagorean theorem question. Now, in order to do this, we're going to look at question number 18. Question number 18 says, the diagram below shows the dimensions of the top surface of a patio. What is the dimension in feet represented by x? Well, x is right here. Now, before you do anything else, there's a lot of extra information in here. But if you do this, you make a nice little triangle for yourself. Anytime you have a missing value, try to make a triangle. And then all you have to do is figure out how long the sides are, and then you use the Pythagorean theorem. Now, if this whole side is 9, and all the way up to here is 5, whatever is left over from 9 when you take 5 away is what this side is worth. 9 minus 5 is 4. The distance all the way across at the bottom is 21. The distance from here to here is 13. So, in my head, if I just do 21 minus 13, that would make the rest of the distance left over 8. So what I have for myself is a nice triangle just like this, and I'm looking for this side. So the first thing I'm going to do is touch the old right angle. If you forget the Pythagorean theorem, think around in your head like, oh, look, it's perfectly made. Here's B, here's A, here's C. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. It's right there in your formulas page. Touch that right angle. Feel a little bad about yourself. And then write A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Uh, you put 4 in parentheses, you put 8 in parentheses. I'm trying to slide this up. I've got not a ton of room this time. So 4 squared is 16 plus 64 gives you 80. C squared equals 80. Do not forget, the last step is always to take that square root. And if I take the square root of 80, I get 8.94. Now, I'm going to go back up here and see which one of these makes that number true. So I do 4 squared of 3. That's not it, but it's close. So 4 square root of 5 works out perfect. These two numbers are the same, so this is my answer. The other one hopefully is on the same side of the page, so I don't have to flip it around. There it is. <coughs> Look, it's a triangle. It even shows you. What is the closest to the length in feet? Oh, sorry. Ernest plans to paint a small rectangular wall, blah, blah, blah. What is the closest in length of feet of the diagonal strip that separates the two colors? So they want to know this. There's your right angle right there. It's a triangle. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. They give you A and B. How nice of them. And by the way, just because they've been giving you A and B does not mean on the test that they will. So still touch the right angle. And remember, if you have this side and this side, you have to solve it, so it's a subtract. But in this case, it's not. It's just this. 73. Take that square root. Eight point five. Looks like 9 to me. Round it up. Now, as your sample problem that you'll have two minutes to work on, because you should be able to fly through these by now. I show you number 24. Becky makes a placemat for a centerpiece. She uses two colors of fabric, blue and gold. The placemat is 10 inches wide and 24 inches long. What is the length in inches of the seam that joins the two colors? Which one of these is the correct answer? You have two minutes to solve. 